Oakley Oakley. We're all done. We've made our frequency bar graph and our relative frequency bar graph. Now notice what the big differences are between the two. Oh, and for the record, I can kind of move this around. I can put this graph on top of that graph. I can kind of shove them over to the side if I want them out of my way. And you can kind of scroll over and see them, that kind of thing. I forgot to add um, lines to those, so I could do that. Border. There we go. Got a border in there now. If you wanted one, you don't have to. As long as you have the bar graph up, and every, I'm sure you're instructor and I would be very happy. With everything nicely labeled and all that stuff. All right, colors and lines, that's kind of more esoteric. Okay, so let's go back to the notes. There they are. Okay, so the mode is whichever co um, category occurred the most frequently. So in this bag of M&Ms, which color was the most frequent color? And you can see it in both of the graphs. It's orange, right? So orange, because um, they that color occurred the most frequently. You can tell because it has the highest bar. In the graphs, I should say. Alright, All right. now what is the big difference between a frequency and a relative frequency bar graph? I mean, when we made them in Excel, were they really, really vastly different from each other? I mean, look at these two graphs. Here, let me drag this up just a little bit. What's the big difference? And the real big difference comes from what your vertical axis, excuse me, I couldn't think there, is, is labeled with. So over here, the vertical axis is counts, numbers, you know whole numbers, two, four, six, eight, ten. You know, it could be to one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's it's how often. So there were literally fourteen orange M and M's in this bag. Down he, over here, it's not the same. It's not fourteen, it's what percentage of the bag was M and M or was orange, excuse me. So it looks like it's like twenty three percent. So twenty three percent of that bag was orange, whereas only fourteen of them were orange, right? So the big difference is that Relative frequency graphs bar charts, bar graphs, whatever, use um, percents, i.e. decimals, relative frequency for the y-axis, the vertical axis. Oops, I ran out of space. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, that's a little hard to read, but that's what. So relative frequency bar charts use percents, i.e. decimals, relative frequencies um, for the vertical axis. Frequency graphs use whole numbers. Frequency graphs use whole numbers, i.e. the counts, frequencies. All right, done with that problem. And you've taken your first step into Excel. I hope it's been exciting for you. You've learned how to find these values with Excel, and you've learned how to make these graphs with Excel. So later on when you get projects where you have to make graphs, you'll be prepared for it, hypothetically speaking. All right, now we're going to make Pareto charts. Pareto charts are bar graphs, but the bars are drawn in decreasing order. All right, so let's go back in here. What we want to do, you know what, I'm going to do this a couple ways. Hmm. You know, the easiest thing to do, and this is only started in this one, and I'll finish it in the next video, I'm going to highlight this table. I'm going to copy it, Control c copy, or you can go up here, copy, and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to paste it. Paste. Or Control v is how I do it. All right, now I'm going to put these in order. So I highlight this column right here. I'm going to, I want it to sort it, sort this column. So I'm going to go to data. I'm going to click sort and I want to go from the highest to the lowest. So I click the Z to A button and it says, do you want to expand? Which means do you want to include these other two columns too? Yes, I do. I want it to sort the whole thing. So I click sort and now see they're in order from the highest one, which is orange to the smallest one, which is green. 